Hey guys, how's it going? Just want to make another quick video here today. And um, so on the topic of eternal security, there are a lot of people who will say, you know, eternal security, you can't find that anywhere in the Bible, you know, that phrase. But you can find eternal life all over the Bible in the New Testament. And uh, that's, that's the same thing, really. So, um, you know, a good first, another good verse to support eternal security is 1 John chapter 5 verse 13 it says these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that ye have already have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God so those who believe in God they already have eternal life those who have been born again truly been saved they truly had saving faith um, you know that includes repentance turning from sins and obedience and surrender um, so you know over and over again we see in the New Testament you know whosoever believes in me has eternal life and will not perish you know it doesn't say whosoever believes in me has the opportunity to have eternal life or or you know possibly might not perish but these are you know straightforward words that are being used here that, that you know that you can trust God's word when he says if you believe on him for your salvation if you're willing to obey him to turn from your sin then you are born again and you have eternal life and there's nothing that you can lose it nothing that you can do to lose it because you are now in God's hands and uh, you know so I've even went to jail over defending this doctrine trying to discuss it with people which is really ridiculous and I can't go into a lot of detail now at least for another year or so uh, then we'll talk about it but um, you know so this is really important to me and I have separated you know with family members with various people over this doctrine uh, I'm not going to consider anybody who teaches conditional salvation as a brother okay the Bible is very clear on this thing um, but uh, you know in that verse too it says that you know you may know that you have eternal life if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation and the last conversation that I had with my dad probably over a year ago I was discussing the Bible with him and he's not a saved man he is an alcoholic and uh, so I have well the, well the last time that we talked you know I was I tried to ask him, you know do you, do you are you saved or whatever and uh, do you know if you're saved or whatever? And he said, you know, well, we can't really know that. Only God knows or whatever. And it's like, well, no, the Bible says that we can know that. You know, so that that's kind of shows me also that, that another, as another proof that he isn't, which, you know, I already knew. But um, so nobody can say that, that we can't know for sure that we're saved or not. The Bible refutes that. And it says that we can know. And it says that we have eternal life. It doesn't say... Um, you know, if, if we could lose our salvation, then Jesus would have to say, you know, you have you have temporal life or you have the possibility of having eternal life. But no, he said you have eternal life if you believe in me. It's a done deal. And, you know, praise the Lord for that. So there will definitely be more and more videos on eternal security, but I just wanted to share that. Um, and I just want to share some other various things. I got another book here recently called Final Authority. And it's looks to be like a really great resource on the history of the King James Bible, defending the King James Bible as the Word of God. And so I definitely got to read that, but I'm still reading, you know, the uh, What Love Is This by Dave Hunt on Calvinism. And I, may, I mentioned some things about that in the Calvinism video that, you know, I don't agree with selling books and copyrights and stuff. And uh, I was thinking about it, you know, more thought needs to be put into it. I mean, if you're, if you're making books and stuff, and this was probably before, you know, the internet was huge and stuff, like back in the day, you know, it does cost money for the pages, for the ink and stuff, you know, maybe not a whole lot. So it's like if somebody wants this material, you know, it's, it's probably, it's not bad, you know, to charge them for, for the cost of the material. I mean, I mean, I can see that as being okay and maybe a little bit extra, you know, for the work of doing it. But, you know, how much of a profit are these people really making? If I pay 20 bucks for a book and, you know, it only costs them like five bucks to make it or something, you know, is it some huge profit that they're making? I mean, I don't think that that's right. And I still think that, you know, copyrights aren't right. And things are definitely totally different today when we have the Internet. I don't think that there's really any excuse. Any Christian ministry should just have let their videos, any of their writings, anything should be available and not copyrighted. 
Uh, I found a really good article on the issue of the copyrights uh, from the, a biblical perspective, and so I'll probably go over that soon, hopefully. But uh, so there's things to think about there, and uh, you know, there's other things I don't agree with on Dave Hunt um, that I don't really see as as critical for separating, but you know, maybe questionable. Like he says things like the Old Testament saints are in the body of Christ now. You know, maybe they weren't until Christ died, but you know, I don't agree with that. And you know, he probably teaches that they weren't permanently indwelled. You know, there's things that I won't separate with people if, if they understand that the Old Testament saints were eternally secure just like today, and people are eternally secure in every dispensation who are saved. But yet they say something like they weren't permanently indwelled, which contradicts that because the indwelling means that you're that you're sealed and that you're, you know, secure. But you know, it's like if they see the big thing, but they're messing up some of the small things, then then I can agree with that. You know, just like the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture. There are a lot of people who believe the pre-tribulation rapture, and uh, they they deny that the pre-tribulation rapture is taught in Matthew or you know in in, in Mark or Luke. And I disagree with that, and it's totally wrong. And we need to see that it is taught in there, and it's completely stupid to try to make those passages that they make for the second coming when they are for the rapture. But they, they do believe the pre-tribulation rapture, and they understand all the other verses and stuff, so I would not separate somebody over that. But if somebody teaches a post-trib rapture or a mid-trib rapture, then I separate over that, okay? Because that's totally against the Bible. The pre-tribulation rapture is the most consistent literal interpretation of eschatology, period. And people can deny that all they want, but it's the truth. Now, but when there's someone like Brian Denlinger or whatever, and they say, well, the, tri the tribulation has to be uh, pre-trib because people during the tribulation can lose their salvation. Well, that's heresy. I reject that. And I don't consider that person a brother. Okay, you say he's defending the pre-tribulation rapture. No, he's teaching heresy is what he's doing. And uh, so anyways... Uh, now I've been working on the website a lot. I've been really working on the Holy Spirit section, and I want it to be really extensive, and hopefully you'll see that soon. Uh, but I encourage you to go to the website, but it is under construction. There's, you know, pages need to be revised and stuff. Basically right now I have like 100 pages on the website, but they're hidden because I need to go through and revise everything. But hopefully speedily I'll get that. And, uh, you know, I'm not working at this moment, don't have a full-time job or anything. So... I have a lot of free time, and I, I, I ask for your prayers that I'll get a full-time job soon, and I'm pretty sure that God will deliver, but I really need to use this free time that I have, and I feel like I've been lazy uh, before, but now I'm really trying to hit it hard to get this website going, to get pages up, to teach, and uh, to help people learn, including myself. I learn as I'm doing it. And uh, so anyways, just pray that, you know, God will help me to focus and give me the willpower to work hard on the website to get things done. And, and hopefully soon, within the next week or two, I'll have this Holy Spirit section done. And I encourage you to check it out now, but it is a mess and stuff. You know, there might be things on there that might contradict each other a little bit or something because I'm using stuff from different articles and whatnot. But uh, I just, when I do get it, when I do feel like it's complete on every page, I'm going to put a comment section and I'll probably make a video and be like, hey, I'm done with this Holy Spirit section for now. Go and check it out. And I hope that you'll comment and I hope there will be some interaction on the website and people will start to really use it. And, uh, and I'm just trying to really work on the sound doctrine section. And when I have like a strong foundation on the website, you know, for the most basic Bible doctrines that people need to know, and I want to expand on them a lot, you know, including eschatology and Jesus Christ and the Trinity and the doctrine of salvation and all this. Uh, so I just hope that I can hit that hard and, and get them quicker and quicker done. And then I can go into all kinds of different topics, you know. Uh, you know, like, I want to go over, you know, is smoking a sin or tattoos a sin? You know, should Christian men have long hair and stuff that I've covered like that in the past? And hard to understand verses or verses that are taken out of the context all the time. And, uh, you know, controversial issues, different religions, all that. I want to go over everything, you know, Lord willing, over time. There's many, many things that I want to go over. And, uh, but the weather's been pretty awesome recently. And, uh, I'm just really happy that things are starting to really come together in my life, and I want to share something else with you really quick before I end this video, and I hope that it's under 15 minutes. It's 10 minutes right now. I've got to pick up this cord. It's my microphone. 
Okay. So, let me see. I wasn't really prepared. So this is my vehicle here. <laughs> it's like a Kia Sportage, but uh, see I've had two DUIs and uh, so it's been a long process going to court and stuff, but now I finally got a breathalyzer installed in my vehicle. So that's what that's like. And they put a camera up here that records every time that I blow on it. And it, see, I gotta turn the vehicle on, turn the power on, then it asks me to blow and I blow in it, and then I can start the vehicle. And uh, there's actually a problem when, I, when this got installed, I have to go get it checked on, but after I blow in it and start on it, uh, it resets itself and makes me blow in it again, so. <laughs> but it's a blessing that I got this now. So once I get a full-time job, I can go back and forth with that. And so, hopefully in a year or so, I'll have my license fully back. But, um, so I just wanted to share those things with you and I'm gonna continue to hammer on that website and uh, hopefully get some more videos done this weekend. And you know, the more that I get done on the website, once I get that strong foundation laid with those sound doctrine, then I can put more time into making the videos. And you know, I'd like to make a video every day or more, but uh, it's just exhausting to try to crunch so many things in. And you know, when I make videos, I don't really like doing stuff like this where I just ramble, but uh, you know, at least go over a couple of videos, but I really like to teach things, you know, hardcore when I'm making a video, but anyways, and also I have several different YouTube channels, but I really just want to use the It Is Written KJV 1611 and the Be Converted one I'll use for special videos, but I have a few different channels and I think that I'm going to try to start uploading videos on all of them just in case something happens, so uh, you might see that. I'll have multiple channels, uh, but thanks for watching and God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.